Hello friends, welcome to my channel The Lens India Professional Photography and the series of Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. So till uh, the last video we have seen uh, how to crop the images uh, in the Lightroom and, and now it's time to process the image in the Lightroom. So to process the image in the Lightroom we have to be in a developed model necessarily. Uh, so if you see the right hand panel, uh, so we can see various tabs which are available right from the basic till calibration. Now we are going to see each tab one by one separately in the sep uh, each separate videos. In this video we will be covering about the basic uh, tab where we will be starting with the editing of the image uh, uh, as a first step and uh, probably uh, there uh, might there are high chances that you may not see all the uh, tabs which are shown on the right hand side panel. So if you don't see any right hand side panel you just have to click on the uh, any of the tab and then you go to customize develop panel and once you see this the screen will pop up so uh, if anything is unchecked you can check check that and so that the uh, tab will be visible to you so let's start with the basic tab uh, so uh, so i have decided to edit this image in the lightroom and uh, i'll open the basic tab the moment we'll open the basic tab we'll see uh, the first option what we have is the treatment so whether you want to process the image in color or whether you want to process the image in black and white so uh, this is the first option which is available and below that you have uh, the color profile so by default uh, the lightroom picks up the adobe color then you have other presets available uh, landscapes portrait standard vivid monochrome and if you want any other uh, profiles to be used you can just click on the browse and you will see that there are various profiles which are available so you have uh, favorites something like six profiles which are available then you have adobe raw profile seven profiles available and camera matching profiles artistics black and white uh, modern and vintage so you can also uh, basically go for a large view of the profiles when you click on this you can see the profile uh, which are shown here the view changes so grid view large view and the list view so list view is uh, you don't see any of the uh, previews of any of the profile so we'll go with the grid view as such as of now so now if you see uh, when i'm hovering the cursor on this profile which are available so it will uh, give you the preview on the big screen too that how the image is going to use so one of the thing when uh, point when we can use this uh, profiles uh, which are given by the adobe so this this stands as a base uh, to post process the image if at all we like any of the profiles so i am not going to uh, select any of the profiles uh, as of now because i want to use my own way of editing the image so to close this you just have to press this close and we are back to the screen now since we have decided that we will uh, process the image with color so we will continue with the color okay before that one more thing that uh, we have seen the profiles from here but we also have the option that we have this uh, bricks or the squares which we can see if you click on that the same view will be available so you can have both the options to go to the profile based on that now the next option uh, what we can see is the adjusting the white balance so when we shoot the images many a times it happens that uh, the images look much more warmer or much more cooler than what we have seen uh, and at um, and probably in our post processing there might be a need to correct those images so we can correct those uh, images and their white balance uh, by three ways so the first is you can see there are two sliders that is the temperature slider uh, temperature slider in the sense the color temperature slider and the tint slider so if you feel that the image needs to be made warmer you can just slide the temperature slider and the image will become warmer on the other hand side if you uh, drag it to the left it, the image will become cooler so now uh, now if, if uh, i'll just try to make it a little bit cooler now if you feel that uh, because of the temperature slider something has gone uh, wrong so or some colors might have changed you can further adjust it based on the tint slider so the tint slider will make it more cooler or it will make it more warmer 
So this is one way we can adjust the light balance. And if you want to reset this, uh, I just double click the uh, both the slider labels, the uh, white balance will get reset. The another second method what you can change the white balance so is through the customs uh, white balance so you, you have first a shot now see one more advantage what we have if we are shooting it in raw if we are processing the raw image we get the benefit of changing this white balance easily because whatever the white balance is uh, applied in the raw image so it will replace the profile when we are changing the uh, white balances and this is uh, basically going to become very difficult when we are processing on the JPEG images because the white balance in the JPEG images if you are trying to change it will add on the existing image it will not replace the existing uh, raw white balance and uh, bake in the new so that is why it is always good to shoot in the raw so and so that it becomes easy to make the changes as, uh, as per our convenience so there are many very uh, various uh, white balance which are available as short auto daylight cloudy uh, and drill flash so i'll i'll just leave it at as short so this is the second way we can adjust our light, uh, white balance then the third way of adjusting uh, the white balance is through this uh, picker actually so if we we just click on the picker you will see that with this picker or the dropper, uh, there is a grid available and it will read the RGB values uh, below the grid. So, so when we want to adjust the white balance, uh, go to the area where you will see that RGB values are nearing between 70 to 75. Now, of course, uh, all RGB, uh, we will not get 70 or 75 all the time or all the RGB uh, with the equal values but try to go as close as possible so you can see that if i'm moving to the white uh, then the rgb values are going to uh, nearing to 100 percent if i'm going to the black it is uh, nearing towards the zero percent uh, or uh, very close to the zero so we have to find a spot where it will be almost all three values are uh, nearing between 70 to 75 roughly so just uh, over the uh, dropper or the speaker to pick up the white balance now you can see the rgb values here are r is 77 g is 76 and b is 72 so just pick up this point and you will see that the image has acquired the white balance so this is the third way of doing the uh, or correcting the white balance so so now once we have corrected the white balance and now let's uh, come to the lower section of this uh, basic tab so we have this tone sections so in this tone sections we have exposure contrast highlights shadows whites and blacks so if you feel that your exposure is wrong so this exposure slider will allow you to adjust your exposure then if uh, then the next is the contrast slider so contrast slider uh, usually I don't uh, apply the correction to the contrast sliders uh, immediately when I'm processing so once the processing of the rest of the parameters are done at last I will touch upon this uh, contrast so this is my workflow but there is nothing right or wrong in this so the next below that is the highlights so if you see that this particular image has uh, highlights at many places because of the water uh, in the uh, frame so I'll try to add, bring down the highlights first if uh, I feel that they are too bright and then if there are any shadows you can just open up your shadows you can see that the shadows are getting open so you can adjust the sliders to uh, the extent where the image is ap appropriately being seen so once you adjust the sliders uh, then the next what is the whites and blacks so and there is uh, same like highlights and sh shadows you can even adjust the whites and blacks but then uh, there is a better way to do it because if you lose on the details while adjusting the whites and blacks probably the image will not have the details in that in the particular area so the best way is to press alt or option key on your pc and by pressing that alt and option key click on the slider you will see that when you click select the whites the screen turns black and if i try to slide the white slider and little bit you will see that after some time, you will see that some spots are appearing. 
Now you can see some white spots and blue spots are appearing. So white spots means uh, the image has started clipping at that particular area. So when it is all white, that means all RGB, all the three colors have been clipped. And when it is blue, that means the blue channel has been clipped. If I drag it further more, you will see that the more and more I drag it to the uh, right side, the image is clipping, right? And if I leave it, now you will see that at all those places where it was showing the spots, the image has clipped. So the better way to address this slider is just the moment you start seeing the spots, you just drag down, again come back and leave the slider over there. Same way, when you want to adjust the blacks, press the alter option key and now you can see the screen has turned white because we need to adjust the blacks. So for adjusting the blacks, drag the slider to the left hand side and you'll see same like what we see, have seen in the uh, with the white slider. So the opposite phenomena is happening with the blacks slider. So now you can see that the spots are appearing over here and if I keep on dragging it, you will see that the details in the black areas now have clipped. So this is the image what you will see when after dragging the black slider. So I'll just reset the slider and again I'll adjust the slider just a little bit so that I'll drag it back before I see the spot. Now if you want to see the before and after of the image by just the adjustment of the slider, you can press the Y key. So if you press the Y key, you can see the before and after. So left hand side is the before and right hand side is the after image. Okay, and if you press the Y key again, it will come to the full screen view. Another way to see the before and after is the uh, effect is just to hit the backslash key and you will see the before and after without having the comparative view. So uh, this is the way of comparing uh, the before and after. Now, uh, <clears throat> if you feel that uh, all the sliders what you have adjusted over here needs to be resetted. So as I mentioned earlier that by double clicking the label, you can reset the slider, but there is another way to do it. So if you press Alt key, you can see this tone is changing to reset tone. So if you click here, so all the sliders will get reset. Now, uh, another way, so uh, we have adjusted these sliders now manually. Another way to process the image is just to press this auto and you will see that all the sliders will get adjusted automatically. But many a times this auto does not work that well. So uh, definitely we will not be selecting the auto in most of the cases. So again, to reset the sliders, reset the tone, reset the presence, so all the sliders are back to zero. So if you want to, another way uh, what we can adjust the sliders is that if you double click any of the sliders by pressing the shift key, so the sliders will get adjusted automatically. So this is the uh, one more method to adjust the sliders automatically individually. So the, the first method was, uh, so I'll reset this once again for demonstration. The first method is that when you click on the auto, all the sliders will adjust themselves in the auto mode. So we reset this and if you want to reset a particular sli slider in the auto mode, you just double click the slider by pressing the shift key and you'll see the slider is getting automatically adjusted. But then um, many a times this may not work. So the better way is to just adjust the sliders the, uh, based on our customized requirement. So I'll just again adjust the sliders for the further demonstration purpose. That's it. So now uh, this was about the tone section and then now we are into the presence uh, going to adjust the present sliders. So the first slider in the presence is this texture. So if you want to add the texture, if you move the slider to the right hand side, you can see the texture is getting added. So more sharpness is getting added over here. And then when we are moving it to the left hand side, the image is becoming softer. So if you want to add the texture to some extent, definitely you can use this texture uh, slider to add more texture to your image. So I'll just, add, if adding too much will uh, make this uh, image look more grungy. So it is up to your individual choice how much to add. And this will also add noise to the image. So uh, please remember that uh, not to do excess uh, uh, adjustment for this texture slider. 
The next is the clarity. So clarity is again basically uh, similar to the uh, texture, but in clarity, what happens is that the mid tones are getting uh, adjusted with this clarity. So they become mid tone pixels become more sharp, sharper. So if I move this clarity uh, to the left hand side, so you will see that the image becomes soft and little bit blurry. And if I start moving this slider to the right, so you'll see that the image becomes sharp. So just before and after, before and after, probably we'll, uh, we'll be able to understand with the magnified view. So just little bit, you can still go. And if you go to extreme right, see the image has started becoming very grungy, which is which may not look good to your eyes. So fairly, uh, if you can see uh, that by adjusting the slider slightly, the image will become sharp. Now, the same problem like texture is with the clarity also. If you do too much, you can see the noise is getting popped out at the background of the image. So just adjust the slider to the extent that the noise also doesn't uh, start increasing and the image also becomes sharp for the mid tones. So this was about the clarity. Uh, slider the next is the dehaze so if we uh, add, want to adjust this slider to the left it will add haze to the image and uh, if we want to remove the haze from the image uh, adjust it to the right hand side now particularly in this image we don't have haze but uh, at times probably you may have to uh, you may uh, would like to use this slider just from the creative point of view and so that by adjusting the slider to the right, it increases the contrast little bit. So it is up to you how to use this slider. But mainly this slider is used to remove the haze or add the haze in the image. Then uh, the last two sliders in this presence is the vibrance and saturations. saturation. So uh, uh, the difference is that both the vibrance and saturation will saturate the color. But the difference between those is vibrance will saturate every color which is not saturated in the which is not uh, uh, at the highest saturation level and it will not saturate those colors which are already saturated whereas the saturation slider is something which is more heavier than the vibrance and it will saturate every other color irrespective whether the color is already saturated or not so these are the two basic difference between the vibrance and saturations so if we slide it to the left uh, the vibrance uh, the color will start dis uh, desaturation and it will look faint. So just add the vibrance to the image uh, so that the color shift does not happen. And even you can add just little bit the uh, saturation. So maybe you can take a final call by adjusting both of these images. So once all these sliders are done, you can see the before and after difference over here. So you, you will see the image has become uh, more has more enhancement as compared to the raw images what we had earlier, and you can see at the both the places how the difference is. So this is what we normally call it as the enhancing the image in uh, the post processing. So that's it about the. Uh, basic tab post processing now we will be in our future videos we will cover rest of the tabs uh, so that further how we can make our images more beautiful and i hope uh, you got a good hang of it so just before closing this uh, uh, session uh, for this basic uh, tab usage so now when we are doing the post processing you may see that uh, at the bottom you have a film strip you have a left hand side panel and you have a, a top line available so if the screen is looking uh, much busy, you can just by clicking the triangle uh, on each panel, you can just uh, click the panels and you will see that uh, the screen is now uh, ready for uh, the full view. So that whenever you want to see the bigger size images uh, or something like this, you get a space to see the image and you can properly focus on the image and if you want to bring those panel back just click on the triangles which are available here and you can see all the view back so that's it for uh, this basic tab uh, so thank you so much for watching this video stay tuned for further videos and uh, if you have not subscribed the channel kindly subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon so that as soon as the new videos are updated you will get the notification of each new videos so that's it thank you so much and bye for now